So we are to start on the financial forecasting. So let us now see what is contained when it comes to financial forecasting. Remember, when it comes to financial forecasting, we are simply projecting the future financial requirement of our business. So let us write something brief concerning the financial forecasting. We write something brief concerning the financial forecasting. We summarize that this involves, this involves the projection, the projection of the financial requirements of the company. It involves the projection of the financial requirements of the company in advance. Projection of the financial requirements of the company in advance. It is important due to the following reasons. It is important due to the following reasons. It is important due to the following reasons. Number one is that it forces managers to plan in advance. Number one is that it forces managers to plan in advance. It forces managers to plan in advance plan in advance and allocate the resources and allocate the resources efficiently and allocate the resources efficiently and allocate the resources efficiently. Then number two is that it forced the management to avoid surprise. It forced the management to avoid surprise it force management to avoid surprise which might arise which might arise in the course of the operation which might arise in the course of the operation which might arise in the course of operation which might arise in the course of operation <laughs> i.e i.e if there is a deficit if there is a deficit, if there is a deficit comma, the managers will decide in advance, the managers will decide in advance, <clears throat> the managers will decide in advance on how to finance the deficit. The managers will decide in advance on how to finance the deficit on how to finance the deficit. Then number three is that it is used for the control purpose. It is used for the control purpose. It is used for the control purpose, i.e. i.e. to enhance control of expenses, to enhance control of expenses to enhance control of the expenses and to avoid wastage and to avoid wastage to avoid wastage during the operations of the company and to avoid wastage during the operations of the company to avoid the wastage during the operations of the company <laughs> The last one, number four, is that it is used for the motivation purpose. It is used for the motivation purpose. It is used for the motivation purposes. So let us now look at the methods of financial forecasting. Now look at the methods of financial forecasting. Now look at the methods of financial forecasting. So number one, so number one, number one, 
So we start with the first one as percentage of the sales method. Percentage of the sales method. So when it comes to the percentage of the sales method, we summarize that under this method, under this method, comma, the following steps will be adopted. Under this method, comma, the following steps will be adopted. Under this method, comma, the following steps will be being adopted. Number one is that identify the balance sheet items. Identify the balance sheet items which will change when the cells change. Identify the balance sheet items which will change when the cells change. Identify the balance sheet items which will change when the cells change, which will change when the cells change. They include, they include current assets. They include current assets, comma, fixed assets, fixed assets, fixed assets, comma, current liabilities, current liabilities, and the retained earnings, current liabilities, and the retained earnings, current liabilities, and the retained earnings. And still on the same, another paragraph is that long-term debt and ordinary share capital, long-term debt and the ordinary share capital, long-term debts and the ordinary share capital will not change when the sales change, will not change when the sales change, they will not change when the sales change, not change when the sales change. Since, since this capital is normally acquired. This capital is normally acquired to finance long-term projects. This capital is normally acquired to finance the long-term project. It is normally acquired to finance the long-term project, the long-term project. And it is not for the revenue expenditure. And it is not for the revenue expenditure, and it is not for the revenue expenditure, and it is not for the revenue expenditure. It's not for the revenue expenditure. Then number two, number two will be that express the various balance sheet items express the various balance sheet items, express the various balance sheet items, which will change when the cells change, which will change when the cells change, which will change when the cells change as a percentage of the cells, which will change when the cells change as a percentage of the cells as a percentage of the sales. Then number three is that determine the total financial requirements. Determine the total financial requirements. Determine the total financial requirements during the forecasting period. Determine the total financial requirements during the forecasting period during the forecasting period due to the increase in the sales during the forecasting period due to the increase in the sales 
during the forecasting period due to the increase in the sets. Then finally, number four is that compute the external compute the external financial requirements of the company. Compute the external financial requirements of the company. Compute the external financial requirements of the company during the financial period as follows. Compute the external financial requirement of the company. You compute the external financial requirement of the company during the financial period as follows. During the financial period as follows. <laughs> So this is now how to get the external financial requirements. This is now how to compute the external financial requirements. So now to see how to get the external financial requirements. So to get the external financial requirements, we start off with increase the fixed assets. Increase in the fixed assets. We start off with increase in the fixed assets. Then we add. <laughs> Increase in assets. Increase in assets. Increase in the current assets. So that's the total 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 financial requirement. Total financial total financial requirements. So once we get the total financial requirements, then now we less we less increase in increase in current assets. So current liabilities. So let's increase in the retained earnings. Increase in retained earnings. Increase in So that we get the external. External financial effect. Opposite as in you start with okay, it will just come out. <laughs> so if it is a negative or minus, but yes, yes, yes. But most of the time this will be performed. So, we can now get a question in your past purpose. We can come up now with a question 
in your first papers. So the question in mind will be November 2016, question number three. November 2016, question number three. So we go through the question for November 2016, question number three. So when you check that sitting of November 2016, question number three, November 2016, number three. Question three, part A. Mine is on page 58. When you check 58, you get November 2016, question number three, part A. So the question reads that the management of Georgina Limited wishes to establish the amount of the external financial needs wishes to establish the amount of the external financial needs. For the year ending 31st December 2016, for the year ending 31st December 2016. So a statement of the financial position of the company as at 31st December 2015 was as follows. So they gave you planned and machinery furniture and refittings, motor vehicles, inventory, account receivable, cash and bank. Then you got the total, then financed by, they have also given you ordinary share capital, retained profits, 14% debenture capital, account payable, also the approved expenses. Account payable and also the approved expenses. Additional information, not number one. Sales for the year ended 31st December 2015. It amounted to shares one 20 million. It amounted to shares one 20 million. Not number two. The company forecast that sales will increase by 10% for the year ending 31st December 2016. Number three. For the year ended 31st December 2015, after tax profit of the company amounted to shares 18 million. It amounted to shares 18 million. Then, not number four, the company will adopt 80% payout ratio as it is dividend policy. The company will adopt 80% payout ratio as it is dividend policy. The payout ratio is expected to remain constant each year in perpetuity. Is expected to remain constant each year in perpetuity. Then they said in the note number five, after tax profit margin, after tax profit margin is also expected to remain constant each year. Assets are expected to vary directly with the sales while account payable and accrued expenses from spontaneous source of financing. Not number seven, any external financing will be effected through the long-term debt financing. It will be effected through the long-term financing. So required Roma letter one, amount of the external 12% long-term debt financing that will be required for the year ending 31st December 2016. Roma letter two, a forecast statement of the financial position. A forecast statement of the financial position. A forecast statement of the financial position. So we start off with, there are four steps I've given you in the notes. The first step, you identify the balance sheet items which will change when the sales change. So we have said that they are simply the current assets, fixed assets, then the current liability and exchange earnings. 
So that one, it is automatic. You can be able to identify them from the information you provided. So ours is now to go to the step number two. You see the step number two? We express those items as a percentage of what? Sales. So let us now start from that point where we express the balance sheet items which will change when the sales change as a percentage of sales. We now express those balance sheet items which will change when the sales change. We now express the items that will change as a percentage of the sales. Express the items that will be able to change. So we start the first one as the plant under machinery. The first item there is meant to be the plant. Plant and machinery. Plant and machinery. For the plant and the machinery, it is that one point two meters. That one point two meters. Then the value for the cells in the lot number one is 120 meters. So divide by 120 meters, then we express it as a percentage. Divide by 120 meters, then you express it as a percentage. The second item is furniture and the fittings. It's meant to be the furniture and the fittings. Furniture and the fittings. So furniture and the fittings is 18.72 meters. We divide by 120 meters. Also express it as a percentage. We go to number three. We go to number three is motor vehicle. Number three is meant to be. Motor vehicles. So for the motor vehicles, it's 12.48. Divide by 120. So express it as a percentage. So in case it has more than one decimal point, how it off to two decimal places? Then the next one is a thou in that way. So number four will be. Inventory. So for the inventory, it is 19.2 million. Divide by 120 million. Also express it as a percentage. Then number five. So number five should be account receivable. Number five should be account receivable. For the account receivables, you take 14.4 million. Also divide by 120 million. Express it as a percentage. The next one is approved expenses. The next one is meant to be approved. Expenses. For the approved expenses, it is 12 million divided by 120 million. We also express it as a percentage. So for now, cash to put in the south of June, but first, let me finish the accounts table. Number seven is the account payable. Account payable. So, account payables is 18. You also divide by 120 million. You also express it as a percentage. And I'd forgotten about cash and bank. Cash and bank. So cash and bank is 3.6 million. Or 
Christ-like by by God. The trade earnings is a different working. After you finish, I want to show you the one for getting the retaining earnings. For the retained workings. So you want now to get the retained earnings. You want now to get the value for the retained earnings. Yeah, Hassan, Hassan, relax. I'm teaching. Before you go to 10%, I've not taught you whether you use it or not. So just relax until I have I have shown you all that is required. You will know where we shall apply that. Just relax. You understand what you are dealing with. Don't confuse your mind by thinking otherwise. <coughs> You shall know where to use whatever you are asking. For the workings, we use what is given. So you are 10%, I know where I will use it later on, not when you are looking for the percentages. So for the retained earnings is a different way on how to compute it. So we now get the retained earnings. So let us see how to get for the retained earnings. Let us see how to get the retained earnings. So we now got the retained earnings. When it comes to the retained earnings, when it comes to the retained earnings, there's a different way on how to compute now the amount of the retained earnings. So for the retained earnings, we start off with the projected sales. For the retained earnings, we start off with the projected sales. So to get the projected sales, we go to the note number one and note number two, where they say that the not the sales will increase by ten percent. So get one ten percent, one ten percent off. So we get one ten percent of one twenty minutes. So that should give us one hundred and dollars. So we get one thirty two. We get one thirty two. Then the question did not give us. We also need to do our work to get the net profit multiplication. Net profit, net profit, my generation. Net profit, my generation.
So, net profit margin ratio was not given. The net profit margin ratio was not given. So, to get the net profit margin ratio, we normally take the net profit, net profit, or earnings after tax. Net profit or earnings after the tax. We normally divide by the sales. To express it as a percentage. So when you want to get the net profit margin ratio, you simply get the net profit or earnings after tax. We divide by the sales, then we express it as a percentage. So after we have done that, when you got the not number, when you check over in the not number, number three, are you able to see not three? Profit after tax is the same as our earnings after tax. So that profit after tax was given which year? You take the 18 million divide by, remember our initial sales, they were 120 million. So get that as a percentage. You get that figure as a percentage. So it should give you what percent? You get 15%. So after that, we now calculate the projected net profit. We get now the projected net profit. Now come up with the projected net profit. So what should be our projected net profit? It is the 15% of the incremental sets. The projected net profit is the 15% of the incremental sales. So is that good? How much? Seven? Nineteen point eight million. Nineteen point eight million. So once you get the 19.8 million, we now go to, we shall now be able to go to the not number four. Not four, they say that the company adopts 80% payout ratio as it is dividend policy. So if they pay out 80%, they must retain 20%. 20%. So now, we can get the increase in the retained earnings. So you are increase in the retained earnings. Increase in the retained earnings. You simply take, you simply take 20%, 20% of 90.8 million. So to get the increase in the retained earnings, because dividend payout ratio is 80%, retention pressure must be So also get the increase in sales. Also get the increase in sales. So also to get your increase in sales, you take the 132 million minus what was initially there as 120 million. Also get the increase in sales. So what do we get from there? So 
get to the front of that. So those who are simply the workings, let us now go to the Roma letter one. Let us now go to the Roma letter one, where we get now the external financial requirements. So now compute external financial requirements. External financial. So in the format I've given you, we start off with the increase in the fixed assets. So we start with increase in the plant and the machinery. We start off with increase in plant machinery. Increase in plant and machinery. So you go to which percent? Land and machinery. So you get 26% multiplied by the incremental sets. Our incremental sets are such as 12 meters. Yeah, so that is how they increase in the plant. So we are supposed to add increase in furniture and the business. Increase in the furniture and So increase in the furniture and the fittings, it was what percent. Point six percent of the twelve minutes. Fifteen point six percent of the twelve. The next one we also add increase in motor jobs. So for the motor vehicles, it was what percent? 10.4% We also add increase in the inventory. Increase. So inventory equals which percent? That is it's also account receivable. Also an in So account receivable it was what percent? Twelve percent of twelve. There is also cash, also add <coughs> increase in the cash. So cash it was what percent? Three percent. So three percent of financial. So when you add them together, you will get the total financial requirements. You get the total. Requirements. You will get the total financial requirements. Then, so once you get that total financial requirements, you will less. You get less. Increase in the current liabilities. So, the first current liabilities is account payables. So account payables, you go to which percent? Mm -hmm. 
kindly let me teach you. you should, someone is wanting to, yeah. Kindly listen what I'm, what I'm teaching. Don't overthink. 132, we are looking at the increase. Increase is the difference between what you had plus what you have at the moment. Yeah, I want to get the external financial requirement. So don't go to 132. 132 is the sales that was there plus the increase. So just listen and get to the end of the question. You'll understand. We are looking at the increase. Up on the summer, increase in the plant. Yeah, you cannot use the total sales. I only use the incremental sales. So increase in the account payable. Account payable it was what percent? Fifteen percent. So multiply incremental sales. We also this increase in the other one was which item account approved expenses of approved expenses approved expenses approved expenses it was which year it was ten percent so ten percent of we also less. Increase in retained earnings. So increase in the retained earnings, I calculated it separately. Able confirm when you are doing the working, how much do we get as the increase in the retained earnings? Sorry? 3.96. So this one we calculated. Remember the increase in the retained earnings? Yeah. So now you will come up with external financial requirements. External financial requirements. We now get the external financial requirements. Now get the external financial requirements. So get that figure for the external financial requirements. And now one was calculated, you are getting which figure? The butter three minutes. Online, what figure are we coming up with? Anyone who has calculated online so that we compare? I'm waiting those who are online. Okay, uh, someone has given me three million. So that should be your Roman letter one. That is your Roman letter one. So we now go to the Roman letter two where we prepare the forecasted statement of the financial position. We now got the forecasted statement of the financial position. We now get the forecasted statement of the financial position. So we now calculate the forecasted statement, yeah. Twelve percent. But here external financial requirement, it have took up from the fourteen percent interest rate. 
underfinanced by yeah. So the e external would have go up from the 12% long-term debt. It is a different debt. Sorry. <coughs> so it is different. Yeah. So currently, na yeye ni nataka kuchukua. Sasa yeye ni nataka kuchukua itatoka kwa 12% long-term debt. Yeah, but it has no effect there. Yeah. We have two debts. The one that we have at the moment in the, the danger of 14%. But to Metafuta, we require external finances to finance our operation, to get to where we are. So to get that external financial, the debt we shall borrow next. They will not be charging us interest of 14%, but now it will be one for 12%. Yeah. So let us now prepare a forecast statement of financial position. A forecast statement. A forecast statement of the financial position. The financial position. So we now come up with a forecast statement of the financial position. So that statement is the same as what you have. We only add the increases. You repeat it the way it is presented. You repeat that statement exactly the way it is, plus now the increases that we have just calculated. So the first one will be plunged under pressure. The first one is land and machinery. So for the plant and the machinery, <coughs> at the moment, it is 31 to 100. So can you give me the increase? You got how much as the increase in the plant and the machinery? Sorry. <laughs> So 3.1 is the same because there are three zeros at the top. So I have put three zeros there. Yeah. So I add that on that part. Even this one, there are three zeros at the top. So the next one is manager and the features. The next one is going to be manager and so for the furniture and the pictures, it is 18, 17, then your heart, your increase will be what I'm happy? 18, 72. Get the five for that. The next one is motor vehicles. The next one is meant to be motor For the motor vehicles, it is 24 for 80, 24, so the 12 for 80, what's the 24, 12 for 80, then you add, how much will you get as the increase in the motor vehicle? 12 for 28. We go to the next one, which is supposed to be inventory. We go to the next one, which is supposed to be inventory. So inventory, it was 19,200. We add the increase. How much was the increase? 1920. The next one is account receivable. Account receivable. For the account receivable, it is 14,400. We also add your increase in that thing. Uh, 
The next one is cash and bank. Cash and bank. So cash and bank, it is 3,600. We add the increase. Increase was how much? So when you add, you will add them together, those totals. Those totals, you will add them together. Then after that, you will now go to the finance buy. After that, we shall go to the finance buy. Under the finance buy, you start off with the ordinary share capital. Ordinary share capital. So I want you to note that part for the ordinary share capital. In the notes, I say that ordinary share capital and long term debt, they don't change. So this one, you record it the way it is. They have given you 42. You record it the way it is. It is meant to be 42. The next one is the retained profits. Retained profits. So for the retained profits, you take the one I've given you, the one that you have in the plus the increase. If you remember increase in the retained earnings, it was how much? That's 960. Like that. Increase for the retained earnings we had calculated separately. The next one is 14% in venture capital. 14% in venture capital. So this one is not changing, it remains the same. How much was it? Apart from that, the next one is account payable. The next one is account payable. So account payable, you take 18 plus the increase. Increase was how much? Sorry? 18. <coughs> The next one is approach expenses. The next one is accrued expenses. So for the accrued expenses, which figure was there? It's called plus plus twelve. So the last one now. Your external financial requirements. We also included there external financial requirements. External financial requirements. So external financial requirements, you got three million. You remember that figure? Yes, yeah, also your statement as money balance by itself. So that statement should be able to balance. The total you have there should be the same as the total we are having at that point. So confirm whether it is going to balance off. You confirm whether it is going to balance off. Confirm whether it is going to balance off. So, is it balanced? Online, it is balancing by how much? The total on both sides should be how much? So, I've been given that they are balancing by, is it 109.560? 109.560. Yeah, so that is now our Roman letter two.
That was meant to be your Roman letter two of the question. So there is also the Roman letter three, where they wanted you to comment on the weaknesses of the method. So those we can have weaknesses, weaknesses or assumptions or limitations, weaknesses or assumptions or limitations of the percentage of sales method, weaknesses or limitations or assumptions of the percentage of the sales method. So when the question asks you for the assumptions, they are the same as the weaknesses or limitations of the percentage of the sales method. So number one, number one is that, number one is that we assume that the company is operating at full capacity. We assume that the company is operating at full capacity. We assume that the company is operating at full capacity. The company is operating at full capacity. Therefore, therefore, increase in the sales, therefore, increase in the sales will lead to increase in the sales, will lead to increase in the fixed assets. Therefore, increase in the sales will lead to increase in the fixed assets. Will lead to the increase in the fixed assets. Number two is that it ignore inflation in the economy. It ignores inflation in the economy. It ignores inflation in the economy. Number three is that the time value of money does not change. The time value of money does not change during the period under the analysis. The time value of money does not change during the period under the analysis. The time value of money does not change during the period under the analysis. Number four is that <clears throat> the relationship between balance sheet items and the sales will remain constant. The relationship between the balance sheet items and the sales will remain constant. The relationship between the balance sheet items and the sales will <clears throat> remain constant during the period under analysis. The relationship between the balance sheet items and the sales will remain constant during the period under analysis. During the period under analysis. The number five will be that the corporate tax rate will not change. The corporate tax rate will not change during the period under analysis. The corporate tax rate will not change during the period under analysis. The corporate tax rate will not change during the period under analysis. So those are the weaknesses. So that part was tested in August 2022. So also check August 2022. August 2022. Question number three, part A. August 2022. Question number three, part A. Are you able to see question three, part A for August 2022? The question says that examine four shortcomings of the percentage of the sales method of forecasting. I wanted to discuss four shortcomings of the percentage of the sales method of forecasting. So shortcomings are the same as limitations. They are the same as the weaknesses. So that part, you are to use that question. So, you are sitting on your table, so you are sitting on your table. So, you are sitting on your table. 
So chances are now what I will use a comprehensive question. Yeah, because the last time they tested me or 2016, they had not tested before until now the city no wakaleta akoka theory part. So they are reminding you, part of two <laughs> So chances could be now they will test you that comprehensive part. Because that was just a reminder to you that since 2016, they have never tested the percentage of sales method. Some people may have think that it is out of the syllabus. But Sasa La sitting Wakawa chances are. So review that. I'm just giving you a hint what may happen in the exam. I'm just giving you a hint of what may happen. Because last time, what it test up of calibration or shortcomings. A reminder that that thing is in the syllabus. A reminder that that method is in the syllabus. So this time around, you need to prepare for that comprehensive question. So we do another question. We do one more other question for that. Yes. Mm. Sorry. Mm. The time I time aspect. Now, sometimes the So it is good to show those workings, those entries. The answer may carry just a mark. So online we get another question, November 2011, question four, part A. November 2011, question number four, part A. November 2011. November 2011. <clears throat> so go to page 98, November 2011. It should be question number four, part A. November 2011. Question number four, part A. We check now. November 2011, question number four, part A. You go to page 98. You go to page 98. So that question reads that the management of Suare Limited wishes to establish the amount of refinancing means wishes to establish the amount of the financing needs for the next two years, for the next two years, ending 30th June, 2012 and 2013. Ending 30th June, 2012 and 2013. The statement of the financial position of the company for the year ended 30th June, 2011 is as follows is as follows. So they have given you shillings, three zeros, net non-current assets. They have also given you inventory. They have also given you the trade receivables and also the cash. Then financed by ordinary share capital, 
then retained earnings, 12% long-term debt, trade payables, accrued expenses. Additional information, not number one. For the year ended 30th June 2011, sales amounted to 360. Sales are projected to rise by 15% in the year ending 30th June 2012 and by 20% in the year ending 30th June 2013. After tax rate of return on sales is 8%. So this one they gave you. You remember the other one we calculated we got 15%. But this one is given which shall be maintained in the future. Not number three, the company intends to maintain a dividend payout ratio of 80%. They intend to maintain a dividend payout ratio of 80%. Any additional financing will be from external source will be effected through the issue of the commercial paper by the company. So now required from letter one, determine the amount of the external financial requirement for the two years ending 30th June 2013. From letter two, a performance statement of the financial position. So we go through those words. The first one I said, you identify the balance sheet items which will change when the sales change. We know there are three of them, there are four of them. Fixed assets, current assets, current liabilities and what? Retained and so we start from that point. We start off from that point. We start off from that particular point. So we express the balance sheet items which will change when the cells change. We express those balance sheet items which will change when the cells change. So this time around, number one is net and current assets. Number one should be net non current assets. Net non current assets. So net non current assets. We simply take 187.2 meters. Remember, you use the original set. Someone had asked me in the other question whether you use the incremental sets. Here, we, when you are calculating percentages, I say that you use the original sets. If they're not number one, it is 300 and not 360. When you are computing the percentages, you use the original figures that you are given. That's now for the non current assets. Then, number two, it is meant to be inventory. Number two is meant to be inventory. For the inventory, it is 57.6 meters. We divide by 360 meters. We also express it as a percentage. We also express it as a percentage. The next one is trade receivable. The next one is supposed to be trade receivable. For the trade receivables, it is for 3.2 million. For 3.2 million, we divide by 300. We also express it as a percentage. The next one will be cash. So number four is meant to be cash. So for cash, it is 10.8 million. 10.8 million. We divide by 360 million. You also express it as a percentage. Then the next one is the trade payable. So number five would be the trade payables. So for the trade payables, it is meant to be 54 million. You also divide by 360 million, express it as a percentage. The next one is accrued expenses. Accrued 
expenses. For the accrued expenses, the bots will take 36 million. Divide by 36 million. Express it as a percentage. So, for the retained earnings, I said there is a different format of computing the retained earnings. So, number seven, for the retained earnings, I gave you a different way. So, for the retained earnings, we start with the projected sales. For the retained earnings, we start off with projected sales. Start off with the projected sales. So to get your projected sales, go to the note number one. Currently, the sales are 360 million, but they are projected to increase by what percent? So we start with the 15%, so that is 115% of 360 million. First, get that. So we need to get 115% of 360 million. Nakuda? 400. <clears throat> or 21.4 million. But now it also increased again. It also increased again. It is 414. 41 for it is 414. Yeah. To the same figure. Then it also increased again by what percent? Mm -hmm. It also increased again by 20%. Now on the next one. So after getting this figure, also moved by 120%. It increased twice. First, it increased by 15%. Then it also increased by 20%. So now we get the total increment of sales. So that will give us which figure. We end up getting which value? 496.8. Then we are now looking for the projected net profit. We now look for the projected net profit. Net profit. So projected net profit. You go to the note number two after tax return on sales is eight percent shall be maintained in the future. So that eight percent is the net profit margin ratio. The other question we calculated. You remember the 15 percent? Mm -hmm. I showed you how to calculate it because it is not given, but this one they calculated. So you get that eight percent of the total sales or nine six. That's now the projected net profit. It should be able to give you the projected net profit. So, what is our projected net profit? That's nine points. That's nine point seven four minutes. Four four minutes. So now from there you get the increase in the retained earnings. So you now get the increase in the retained earnings. So a dividend payout ratio is given. Are you able to see in the note number three, the company is there to maintain a dividend payout ratio of what percent? 80%, which is the retained. 20% of that 9.744. So that's now what we give you the increase in the retained earnings. That is what should give you the increase in the retained earnings. Then, apart from that, also get now the increase in the sales. Also, compute increase in. 
cells. So to get increase in cells, you simply take 496.8 meters. Subtract what was there initially, 360 meters. So that difference will give you increase in the cells. That difference will give you the increase in the cells. So your increase in cells is how much? 136.8. So now we go to part A of the question. So we go to so Roma letter one of the question. External financial requirements. Let us now get the external financial requirements. Let us now get the external financial requirements. We now compute external financial requirements. We now come up with external Requirements. We now get external financial requirements. So, in the external financial requirement, we start with the increase in the net and current assets. We start off with increase. Increase in net and current assets. So we got to what percent? Two percent. So if it's two percent, our incremental sense is equals one part what? One part six point eight. So multiplied by one part six point eight minutes. Then you also add increase in incremental. Increase in the inventory. So, increase in the inventory it was which percent? Is that the sixteen percent of one thirty six point eight? The next one will be increase in the trade receivable. Increase in the trade. So a trade receivable, it was what percent? So you get 12 percent of 136.8. The next one is cash. Increase in cash. So cash, it was what percent? So, when you don't add them, they will give you the total financial requirement. Total financial requirements. The total financial requirements. Then, after that, we invest. That's increase in the trade payables. Increase in the trade payables. So trade payables, you got which percent? So get 15% of 136.82. The next one is also less. Increase in upload expenses. 
increase the approved expenses. So approved expenses equals what percent? So 10 percent of 136.8. Then we also let's increase in the retained earnings. So retained earnings, it was what percent? Sorry, we calculated. How much was that increase in the retained earnings? Seven point nine four. Seven point nine four. So now get the external financial requirements. External financial. So now get the external financial requirements. So now you come up with So we are getting how much? External financial requirements we, we, we are getting which fear. Seventy one point three nine five two. So Nataka prepare your performance statement of the financial position. You just take what you are given plus the increase. So can you follow the same format and prepare the performer statement of the financial position? You just follow exactly what is given plus the increase that you have calculated. Online, are we able to do that? Those who are online, is it possible to follow the same procedure the way I did the other question, then you do the same and get that performance statement. Yeah, try and see whether it is balanced. Try and see whether it is balancing because you just take exactly what is given. You don't change the format. The format remains the same. You take what you are given plus the increase. The only change will be at the end where you add external financial requirement and see what it is balancing. Ordinary share capital does not change. The long term debt also does not change. So try and confirm whether 
that statement will be equal to balance.
Quando acaba o início, eu vejo.
Maona it a balance now four twelve. Four twelve three forty four. Online wengine mukosawa. I've seen Masi has given me the balanced figure. How about the others? Yeah, so that is now for the financial forecasting. If you get time, I will give you a question you attempt on your own, September 2015, question five, part A. If you get time, you attempt the question for September 2015, question number five, part A. That will be your assignment. You try that one. You try that one. So the next one is supposed to be number two, the cash budget. Yeah. So the next one is meant to be the cash budget. Leo to kona class anan. Last time to kona. kona. So when we meet at two, we shall now look at the cash budget. So we can stop there. When we meet in the afternoon at two. We shall do the cash budget so that we clear the financial forecasting. There are two methods, percentage of the sales method, then there will be the cash budget. Once we finish, we shall start a new topic. So to Kimaliza, your cash budget is not something detailed, something very small. So at two, I will finish that cash budget. Then I start another topic. So we can stop there for today. Online, I've said we have a class at two. Is it okay? Yeah, Mutiani Karibu in Africa. I hope Mukosawa when we have a class at two. Okay.